I'm Nick Kumalatsos. I spent 12 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, half of that was with Marine Reconnaissance and Special Operations. And like all good things, some things come to an end. And uh, that transition for me was an interesting one. So interesting that I actually wrote a book about it. I never thought that it would lead me here, but that's where journeys, that's where adventures kind of lead. They lead you to unknown locations. Three years ago, Josh and I wrote our first training book because it was asked so much for young men joining the military that we said we've got to put something together. My name is Josh Hansberger and I've been an active human being pretty much dominantly throughout my entire life. Throughout the military, I joined, I was in the infantry for, for quite some time. I uh, did a career um, teaching, mentoring, and guiding folks uh, throughout weapons and qualifications and different things uh, like that. And I eventually got into what I really found to love, which was special operations towards about the latter half of my career. What is the Agogi? It was actually the training camp for the Spartans. I always liked that. I always liked this training compound mentality of where men go to train to become better, to become anti-fragile, to become more deadly, more successful. And, you know, being a Greek, I've always been very tied to my roots and always very tied to the history of the Greeks. And so the Agogi was the Spartan training camp for young men to become Spartan citizens. And they were like, I think around the age of seven, the young men were basically ripped out of their mom's arms, dragged off to the Spartan camp to be trained in survival and, and warfare and you know everything that it needed to become to be a Spartan citizen, to become the most deadly, anti-fragile, successful Spartan that you could be. And that concept really resonated with me, especially my times in the military, my time in special operations, and because of my Greek heritage. So what does the agogi mean to us? Taking that concept, taking what those men 2,500 years ago did, taking that concept of, of taking someone, a person who is not the best version of themselves and putting them into a system to make them strong, anti-fragile, the best family man, the best provider, the best protector that they can be. How do you do that? Well, what we did was we developed through uh, learning and through uh, trial and error, we developed these pillars. First pillar of, of Gogi for us is fitness. Uh, and the reason that fitness is our first pillar is because that's the most crucial, the most foundational aspect of a human being. Um, if you yourself are not um, fit, whether that's in body, mind, or spirit, or if you're lacking on one of those three, uh, you're not gonna be uh, in unity within yourself. Um, you need to kind of constantly be crafting and, and fine tuning um, yourself as, as a fit individual. Um, fit in the physical plane, uh, that's, you know, that's in the gym, that's outdoor during activities, uh, fit in the mental plane, you know, educating yourself, reading books, meditating. What happens when we're physically fit? Everything is optimized, right? Our, our health is optimized, our, um, our diet is optimized, our brain is optimized, our energy is optimized. So what happens then? Then we're doing good in business, we have better relationships, we make more money, we're able to provide more. So it's the step one. Step one is taking ownership of where you're at in your physical fitness, both in your mind, body, and spirit, and correcting it. So the second pillar of Agogi is discipline. And coming from me, uh, I deem it to be the consistency in your life can create and will create discipline. So we can all have these, uh, these objectives that we set forth, these things that we want to complete, accomplish in life but without consistency and diligence and determination we're not going to actually be able to get there if we're not disciplined in our approach to getting there and we're not consistent in the things that we say we want to be we are not going to be able to achieve our objectives um, and that is where a lot of people end up failing is consistency in the routine consistency in life um, and consistency in the discipline if you have discipline you're going to be consistent if you are consistent, that's gonna create a disciplined approach to your life to, for you to be able to achieve your objectives. This goes into beliefs now. And then beliefs is a strong thing. So you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you can achieve your weight loss goals. You can achieve your strength goals, your muscle building goals. You can achieve 
uh, that promotion. Like there is so much power into belief. And if you don't believe in yourself, well, you're, you're, you're speaking your own progress into existence. Think of yourself as that better person already. Believe in yourself that you can do it. And once you start believing in yourself and having that belief, then you have that confidence. Having that confidence allows yourself to start to build a routine, which it starts to build on the consistency and then which, which starts to build on the determination. And then the ball just starts rolling forward. And little do you know, you know, having that belief and the confidence in yourself helps propel and project yourself into achieving great things. Now, once we can get you physically fit, once we create discipline and we get you to believe in yourself, now we can truly take care of the most important pillar, your tribe. When you have those other three things taken care of, now you can provide for your tribe efficiently, whether it be your family tribe, your work tribe, your military tribe, whatever it may be. Now you're the best. Now we've, you've tuned yourself into being the best version of yourself. You're faster, you're stronger, you're smarter. You've got belief, you've got discipline, you're hardened. You're hardening your resolve, you're hardening your goals. You are laser focused on what you have to do and who you have to provide for and the reason why you're doing it. Because the tribe is the most important thing. Because no matter, after everything else fades away, after you've accomplished all your goals, after you've made a million dollars, after you're big, strong, jacked and tan, as we used to say, the only thing that is left is that tribe. So I know what it's like to have my tribe taken from me. When I had my injury, my tribe, my working tribe that I was, and who I was as a person, as a special operator, was gone. So that tribe was slowly being taken away from me. The tribe I was gonna be spending my most time with and the most dedicated to has always been my family. And that's the tribe that ended up taking over once I lost the tribe from the military. I was stripped of everything that I could, physically, mentally, emotionally, some of it by the nature of the injury, some of it by just the nature of where I ended up taking myself as an excuse because of that injury. I came home in not even a wheelchair. Well, I was in a wheelchair, but I came home you know, in a cast with someone else pushing me in a wheelchair. I couldn't walk, I could barely move. Uh, my mind and everything was kind of taken from me at, at a point in time. And I had my kids, my oldest daughter, look at me at the time. She was maybe three years old. And just the words out of her mouth were, don't worry, dad, I'm gonna teach you how to walk again. Fuck, it still kills me. <laughs> it still kills me. And so my daughter wanted nothing more than for me to be able to walk again. And what the doctors told me was something completely contrary to that. They told me essentially, I was not really gonna be able to run again. I really wasn't gonna be deadlifting again. I wasn't gonna be that active person that I want to be for myself, for my family, and just for the lifestyle that, that I like to lead. So I took that as a challenge. And it wasn't a challenge. That was the legitimate facts that I was presented with. The injuries that I sustained were something that most people don't come back from. And that's not to tip my own hat, but that's just the reality of the, in the nature of the injuries that I had. And this is when I started to change my mental framework of, of who I am and to realize that I needed to get myself in order. I needed to get my physical state in order or those kids were not gonna have a dad that they could run and play with and be with for any extent or at any time. Um, I needed to get my mind right. I needed to get my mind not in the doctor's frame of mind to where I was not gonna be able to do things. I needed to get my mind back into the mindset of a person who is an achiever that is a doer and that is capable, who believes in himself, that I could be able to run, walk, lift, jump, whatever I wanted to do in life, whatever life was gonna throw at me, I was gonna be able to do those things. And the only way I was gonna be able to do those things is through consistency, is through a routine, through the determination, the drive, and the dedication by doing the things that I knew I had to do in order to achieve the objective, which was to be an active member of my life and my kid's life. I know what it's like to be broken, to be battered, to be dilapidated mentally, physically, and emotionally. I have been there. I have come from a state to where 
I was a special operations Marine conducting operations in austere environments across the globe doing great things and for things to be taken away from me in a moment's notice. But what I also know is what it takes to get yourself out of that hole, physically and mentally, emotionally, to push yourself past that barrier of being a broken person, physically, mentally, emotionally, to be battered, to be down. And I know what it takes to lift you back up, to build myself back up. And that's what I like to do for other people is to build them up physically, mentally, and emotionally so they can be the best human being as possible. The Agogi is more than just a training plan. The Agogi is more than just uh, proper diet and nutrition. The Agogi is, it's a training camp to make you the best human being that you can be and to level up, constantly level up. And when you get there, we reevaluate all those four pillars and we level up again and we just keep going. So you have to ask yourself, are you the best human being that you can be? And if not, Josh and I are here to help you and guide you to each one of those steps. And the most important thing, to show you how to provide for your tribe.